we'd love to position a model for you that we've developed that helps to clearly articulate how it is that we make sense of this EDI work, of this equality, diversity, and inclusion work. This model also enables us to make sense regarding what's going on in South Africa, and not only within our local context, but within the world. Because we are in a world where, good gracious, from people talking about alternative facts, I never knew that such a thing existed, uh, to talking about fake news, there's really like a rush of information that's coming at us. And because there's so much that's happening, we tend to just get in our little ball to try to protect ourselves because it's just too much to be able to deal with. And so this model really enables us to be able to synthesize and understand more clearer what's going on within the space of equality, diversity, and inclusion, as well as what's going on within our local and global context. So at the top of this, we have what we call the factual matrix. All right? What for you would you say are the topical discussions that we're having in South Africa at the moment? So for example, elections is one of them. What are we talking about in the South African space? You shout them, we'll write them. Electricity, yeah, or the lack thereof. Uh -huh. Corruption, big one. Land. Land. Protests, Protests. yes. Unemployment. Drugs, petrol hikes. Petrol. Free education. Yeah, we've got some middle class people. Hey, this petrol thing is rising. <laughs> Uh, the ones that they take, so what are you talking about? Anyway, free education, yes. <laughs> no. And there's many more. Crime. Crime. Gender-based violence. All right. Freedom. No, it's a very Custa, interesting Custa, yeah. Yes, now Custa is a brilliant one. All right. And I mean, we could go on for a while to state these things. These are the things that we love to talk about as South Africans. These are the things that, especially here in Gauteng, we can't even get enough of. Not only do we have Kai FM, we've got 702, we've got, uh, Power which FM. is in Power FM. No, we talk, uh, Radio 2000. No, we love talking about this stuff. And we love talking about this stuff because this stuff is safe, all right? We'll call onto these radios and we'll go back and forth. This is my opinion, where corruption, where land, where education, where service delivery protests are concerned, all right? This is my thing, this is why I'm right, this is why you're wrong. And then if you tell me something and I think differently from you, then I'll just say, yeah, let's agree to disagree. That is code for I think you're an idiot, but I don't have time to engage you right now. So let's agree to disagree. All right? We love this stuff as South Africans because this stuff is safe. This stuff is conceptual. But there is something that we're trying to express whenever we're talking about these things. So whenever we're talking about land, free education, corruption, ESCOM, unemployment, petrol price increases, what do you think are the two most dominant emotions that I play whenever we're discussing these things? Yeah. Anger is one of them, and? Anger and fear. You know what's fascinating? We run this work even in high schools, right? 14-year-old South Africans right now, in less than five seconds, just as you guys have just done, will tell you anger and fear are the things that I play whenever we're engaging with these topics as South Africans. No exception. Right? But here's the thing. We don't talk about our angers and our fear. That's not allowed, especially in our corporate spaces. When you come to, through that turnstile, you leave all your gag at home, or in your car, or in the bus, and when you come into our organization, you're just this professional, beautiful, sanitized human being who's just <laughs> going to deliver all the time, every time. That's what we expect. Yeah? Yeah? When you sign that letter of employment, I hereby consent that I will leave my gag at home. This is what you're doing. <laughs> and I'll arrive and be professional. All right? We're not allowed to speak or even express our emotions. So we don't talk about the fear and the anger. We're talking about land. We're talking about casta. We're talking about protests. We're talking about corruption. But what we're trying to do is to express our anger and to express our fear as it relates to land, corruption, and all these things. But we can't talk about our emotions. We're talking about the stuff. So we're trying to use the stuff in order to try to express our emotions. But we can't tr express our emotions. We're talking about the stuff. And therefore, at the end of the day, what the heck are we talking about? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. There's no resolution. That's why Power FM, Kai FM, Radio 2, they're all still in business and will continue to, because there's no resolution. <laughs> We're talking about nothing. All right? But here's the thing that we do well as South Africans. Imagine this. We go to a law firm. We have uh, two individuals. So in law firms, they call them candidate attorneys. So when they come from university, they come in as candidate attorneys, and they'll eventually be promoted to like associates and, they, and then partners. So the pe partners are the big bosses. Yeah or the pre-94 South Africans would say Makulu boss, those ones, partner, when you've made it. So we've got a 23-year-old black female and a 23-year-old white male. So the 23-year-old white male says this. It says, Roy, Dominic, you know, whenever we're talking about equality, diversity, inclusion, and transformation, it terrifies me. Because for me, I know that I will never become partner within this organization. I am the wrong race, I am the wrong gender. 
So this discussion terrifies me because I know I will never make partner within this organization. Black female is looking at him and he's talking. You, you know that look that women give? Like, what are you on about? <laughs> that, that's one. <laughs> so she looks at him and she says, you must be out of your mind. You are a white male in a law firm in South Africa. Everybody that is called partner and runs this organization looks like you. If anyone between you and I is not going to make partner, it's me, black female. Nobody looks like me out there. I don't have a mentor. I do not have a sponsor. I know for a fact. Between you and I, you're the one that's going to rise all the way to the top as partner. He looks at her. Says, I, my sister, mm -mm, you've got this all wrong. You, my dear, all these policies and even where the country's going, all the stuff has been set up for you to literally, easy road, all the way to the top, you'll become partner. So these individuals being very young lawyers, you know how lawyers are, ne? they need to make their case. Ba -ba 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 going back and forth. So we let this conversation go on for about 10 minutes. And then eventually we stop them. So is it clear to you that these two individuals were trying to express the exact same emotions from different perspectives, but the exact same feeling? But what they were stuck in trying to do is trying to prove whose pain is worse than the other one. What they were trying to do is like me saying, I've got a headache. I say, Roy, I've got a headache. And Roy, and Roy is like, yeah, you've got a headache, but I also have a headache and it's much worse than yours. And now we're going back and forth trying to prove whose headache is worse than whose, rather than acknowledging we're both experiencing a headache from different perspectives, from different circumstances. But when we start trying to prove whose headache is worse than whose, we can never get to that point where we now have resolution to move forward. All right? So this is the emotional space. And then the last one of this layer, layered cake as a model is the historical context. Now you need to appreciate this. If you do not have a firm understanding and grasp of our historical context, the anger and the fear will not make sense as it relates to land. If you don't understand the historical context, the anger of the fees must fall students will not make sense <laughs> no, regarding how it is that they went about it. But this is what the students were telling us. They were saying people that look like me, 90% of those students historically, because of our history, are now in 2019 born in households where the combined income of their parents and their guardians is 4,500 rand or less per month. 90% of them. And here we're talking Rainbow Nation, equal access to education, equal access to opportunity. And they're saying, guys, we've been born into circumstances where we've got no chance in hell to even access that opportunity. But if you ignore that history, you won't understand the emotions as it relates to what it is that we're trying to resolve when we're speaking about fees must fall. So this is why this is a powerful model for us as it is an exercise in compassion. And I think it's important to say that this is not black anger and white fear or colored anger and Indian fear, right? This is a shared anger and fear that we all hold as South Africans. When we talk about this historical matrix for me as a white South African, it, it most clearly came to understanding when I was in university, right? So now I have to share a very embarrassing story of what I did um, at UCT. So I'm this young, liberal, white, wokish law student and a friend of mine is hosting a big facilitation on upper campus called black rights white fear and i'm like ah oh, yes this is right up my alley i'm gonna love this so i march up to upper campus i'm ready we're in this huge hall big circle facilitation everyone's sitting and people start sharing their stories of apartheid and post-apartheid south africa and as you can imagine it is immensely emotional tears anger all the things you would expect right it's however it was the last person to speak, who was Juan Elisa, which really for me, I lost the plot, right? Juan Elisa is a black female who was in my law class at the time. She starts to share her stories of apartheid and post-apartheid South Africa, and she's angry, and she's emotional, and I'm literally looking, you know the, the look that Dom said only women give? It's not true, I gave it as well. I was like, what are you talking about? You're in my law class at the top university on the continent, you got a MacBook, you're killing it, why are you so angry? It almost felt kind of performative. So I'm now getting emotional, she finishes, they say any comments, I say yes, I've got a comment, they recognize me, 300 people in the space, I say you know what I think needs to happen, they say what? I said what I think needs to happen in order for South Africa to move forward is that black people just need to get over apartheid, and we need to drive that way together, right? You guys are giving me more emotion than I got. <laughs> now. Please understand, what I think is going to happen is ululation, black people looking at each other saying, we never thought of that, that's amazing, come on, let's do this, where are you? And they'd like carry me out, obviously. Obviously that didn't happen. It was so quiet, right? 
It dropped 100 degrees. The friend who brought me there was like, what have you done to me? You know, she kind of like sunk back into the crowd. And it was really only through the graciousness and the patience of particularly the black female facilitation, facilitators in that day to give me two pieces of information that have stuck with me forever, and it's this. That as a white South African, it is very easy for me to say, get over apartheid, we're going that way. Because I sit on the side of the river that doesn't have to get over much. So it's easy for me to say, come on, change your attitude, change your life, let's go this way. Right? Incredible piece of information for me. The second part, which speaks to this historical matrix, is this. That much like advantage is inherited, which we understand through wills and trusts and estates, so too is disadvantage. That much like advantage is inherited, so too is disadvantage. That even though one Elise is sitting next to me with a MacBook at the top university and she's killing it, does not mean that she does not have an inherited disadvantage given her race and agenda, given our history. Now I want to give that to you because in our organizations, what we're seeing is this. We bring in our graduates and we say, ah, oh, everyone is equal. Everyone's equal. We treat everyone equally in our organizations. It's about how hard you work is how far you'll go. Not understanding that even though we all show up with smiley faces, we're not all having the same experience. Nope. There is inherited disadvantage, which is a barrier to really excelling within the space. And we need to start being aware of these things. But it's difficult and it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm.